Hello folks and welcome to an Inkdependence.com video review and water drop test. This time, Franklin Christoph's Loden. Loden is a super dark green. Let me pick this pad up here and uh, get it in the light a little bit. Uh, I'm having to do this video in my light tent, uh, which is going to restrict some things. Um, but uh, it's been raining here for a couple, three days, and so I've not been able to get any natural light in my office. But uh, be that as it may, this is a very dark green. Uh, you can see there and a few other places. You can see more pictures on the blog. Go ahead and check those out. But this is a very dark, very dark green. Um, this is the little bottle it came from. Uh, came in from uh, Franklin Christoph. Thank you very much to Franklin Christoph for giving me this bottle of ink to test out. They gave this to me as a surprise at the DC Pin Show. Love that kind of surprise. Um, I've used up, I don't know, probably half a bottle or so. Uh, this is an ink that I like quite a bit. These new inks are pretty dark. This one and Black Cherry, I mean, they're very dark. Um, Tenebrous Purple Atom, that sort of thing. Very dark inks. Um, but this one, you can see, varies quite a bit with the pen that it's in. So, uh, firstly is this uh, Wall Ever Sharp Skyliner. This is one of the new models. Uh, and it's got a semi-flex sort of nib, but it's uh, quite wet. So you're gonna see that that one is mostly black. Right there. And let it focus. Yeah, it's very, very dark. You can see some shading there and the lettering of Skyliner and such like that. You'll see some shading with this nib. You won't see any sheen, so no sheen. Uh, next up is this uh, Oblique Medium. This is on a, um, hmm, it's about empty. All right. Pretty much used it up. This is an Oblique Medium on this Lamy All-Star. You can see it's got a foot there. If you look closely at the tip, it's slanted. That gives you almost a stub sort of thing. Uh, but uh, this one's not a very uh, not a very wet nib. Most of my Lamy nibs are not, in fact, all of my Lamy nibs are not wet. They're all a little bit dry. And so as a result, you can see there that the ink is quite a bit more green than it is in the sample below. Then up here to a Delta Unica Medium. I'm using this Unica right here, which has a very wet medium nib. It's, fan it's a great nib, but it is quite wet. Now uh, this is going to lead to some bleeding and feathering and stuff when we get to the copy paper sample, which you can also see there that it's quite, uh, quite dark in the squiggle and in the text. And next is a Sailor Pro Gear Hard Medium. This is uh, the driest of the four. This nib, this is the 21 karat nib. It's the hard medium, but uh, this one is quite dry. Let me zoom in there again, and you can see there uh, that uh, it's quite green compared to that one, and uh, these two are about the same. So if you have a drier nib, yeah, it's gonna look a lot more green, but if you have a nib that tends to be wet, this is gonna be a very, very deep green, like very dark. So that's that, uh, as far as color story. Uh, the flow is medium wet. Even in the um, my, my kind of dry Lammies, it flows perfectly well. It's not out of control or anything. In fact, I might just downgrade that to medium. But uh, in the other nibs, it performs just fine. It actually starts up every time in all of those pens. Which is a little surprising for that Skyliner, which tends to be a little bit of a hard starter. No problems, though, with this ink, so I'm pretty happy about that. There is, unfortunately, some bleeding, feathering, and spreading on the copy paper sample. Of course, not on Rhodia. If you look at the back of this one... Uh, no, you see some show through, but that's just because the paper is thin, uh, but yeah, no bleed. So that's not surprising. Hardly anything bleeds on Rodeo. Uh, but on copy paper, like this 20 pound Staples paper, you can see here that uh, definitely you get some spread. You get quite a bit of uh, feathering here and there. These though, these top two are the wetter of the uh, four nibs, and so you're definitely going to see that. Um, and then if you look at the back, actually up here where it says wet nibs, uh, you get quite a bit of spread there too. So uh, with a wet nib, this is definitely going to do some, uh, some bleed. Here's the back of that page. You can, you can read the text, which is unfortunate, but again, this up here is done with the wet nibs. This is with uh, the dry nib. This is from the, um, uh, the Lamy right here. That's that oblique medium. That's the blue style. Yep. That's in the Lamy, this line, which is just show through. It's not really bleed. There's a couple little spots in there. And then like one spot from the Sailor, but the rest of it's fine. So one thing I'll attribute that to, and here you can see, can you? Oh no, it's blasting out the, uh, <laughs> the light sensor on this uh, iPhone. But you can see sort of inconsistencies when I hold it up to the, to the light. You see inconsistencies in the weave of the paper. So I'm going to go ahead and blame that mostly, but this does have a little bit of a tendency to uh, do a little bit of bleeding and feathering. 
nonetheless, I've used half a bottle of this stuff. I've refilled a couple of these pens a few times because I really like this ink. The color is fantastic and it you know performs very well aside from a, a tendency to bleed a little bit. So very cool. Um, probably dark enough to pass as a black. So another one of those inks that if you want to use it in a very formal environment and you have to have a black ink, maybe you could get away with using this one. I think you probably could if you're you know at all sneaky. Uh, so here it is compared to several other inks, including several greens. I do tend to keep greens in pens. So there's a loading up there at the top. And then underneath that, the Defoe Palm Green, which is one of my favorites. I really like the look of this Defoe Palm Green. It's got this very interesting olive-y sort of you know, color to it. Uh, the Franklin Christoph Emerald 357, that's a very bright green in the collection. I really like that one as well. It's one of my favorite bright greens. This is, this is a very good collection of inks. Uh, underneath that, the Stabler Blue, which is kind of a purpley blue, as you can see there. Platinum Carbon, which is a deep, deep black. And then underneath that, uh, Pelican's Edelstein Adventurine, which I just got yesterday and haven't really had a, t a chance to play with. But you can see that it's kind of close to the 357, but it's not quite as dark. Uh, that might just be because it was a fresh fill and maybe there's a little bit of water or something in the feed. Uh, we'll see how I'm going to you know, sit around and see how that goes. But uh, there you go. So there's some inks to compare it to. All right, so water drop test time. Let's uh, get my syringe ready here. Okay, so here it goes. You can probably hear Scraggles in the background being silly. She's helping me. Oh man, look at that. So let's get a little on the words, why not? Uh, yeah, it's coming right up immediately. I'm not super shocked by that, uh, but um, this one not gonna be water resistant. We'll go ahead and mop this up because it's not got much else to show us. No water resistance on this ink. That's not uh, necessarily a deal breaker. I, I don't use a waterproof ink all the time anyway. Uh, here you go. So not much left. You get everything coming up on here on the towel. So uh, this one, not at all uh, what I would call water resistant. You get a little bit of the line left over, but not very much at all. It's pretty much all gone. Even here, we just kind of got you know, wet from the paper towel, like, you know, smudged off. And this has been, as I said, it wrote it a, no, two, three, four days ago, a few days ago anyway. Here is the chromatography. You can see the line where it started was here. There is nothing left there, so I was not surprised when this one didn't uh, didn't hold up underwater. Um, there it is. The light intensity is having a problem with my uh, my camera here. You can see there's a little bit of like a, a I don't know, taupe smudge or something there. And a lot of this is very, very dark. And then you have this little corner of, I don't know, cerulean or turquoise or something just right there in the corner. The rest of this is kind of a chocolatey brown. You get, I don't know if you can actually see on the video, but there is, and I can see it on the screen a little bit, up here, just a tinge of uh, really dark blue up the very top edge. But not much. Mostly this is, um, mostly this is kind of brown and like deep, deep greens. Uh, this is a very interesting color. Uh, I've actually got a pen that's kind of this color, and I might need to just put it in there, just have a little, you know, matchy-matchy uh, with my pen and ink, which I don't usually do, but I might try it out with this one. All right, so this is, has been Franklin Christoph's Loden. This is a very, very dark green ink. You can probably get away with calling this one a black ink if you're in an office environment and people don't really know better, don't know your penchant for uh, fountain penery. But um, nonetheless, it is a green, mostly. So there's that. Uh, this has been Franklin Christoph Loden. You can find this at Franklin Christoph's website, franklin-christoph.com. Uh, you might also be able to find it at Anderson Pens for a little while. I hear they have a few bottles of it at andersonpens.com. And that's pretty much it. They don't really sell anywhere else. So go over to Franklin Christoph and uh, pick yourself up some of this Loden ink. And hey, tell them I sent you. I don't know if it'll get you anything special or me special, but eh, couldn't hurt, right? So there you go. Uh, I'm Mike. This is inkdependence.com. If you like what's going on here at the blog, please go over to patreon.com slash inkdependence to find out how you can help support the blog. I'll give you a hint. That is through cash. So uh, go to Patreon, check out the details there. And uh, to my patrons, thank you very much from the, uh, the cockles of my heart. And uh, I will see you all later. Peace out.